Hello, welcome to the Monday, April 4th, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, let's start with patches today, and GitLab did release a critical security release, 14.9.2. 14.8.5 and 14.7.7 are the versions that you should be running now. There are a total of 17 vulnerabilities that are being addressed in these updates. The first one is a critical one, and it's a static password that inadvertently is set during Omnia-based registration. And then we have two high stored cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So this critical OmniAuth issue that affects you if you're using, for example, OAuth, LDAP, or SAML in order to authenticate, in this case, a static password was set for the user that an attacker could then use to take over accounts. Probably not hard what that static password is, and this also affected GitLab.com passwords and respective passwords have been reset by GitLab. You probably should do the same for your users after you apply the patch. The cross-site scripting issues sound more like something that would be exploited by an authenticated user. Uh, you have to leave notes or you have to add uh, milestone references in order to exploit this. Still, this could of course then be used uh, to elevate privileges if, uh, for example, administrator would be exposed to that cross-site scripting code. So patch, and as usual, if you don't need to, then don't expose GitLab to the internet. And then we have more details from Viasat regarding the attack against their KASAT network that took down thousands of modems connected to the network in Europe. Now, it affected just part of their network a subsidiary called Skylogic was really what was affected here. And the modems were using the two-way service brand. Now, what apparently happened here was sort of two things. First of all, the initial intrusion happened through a unprotected VPN connection, as so often if you're not doing strong two-factor authentication on your VPN, and by strong I'm meaning not just an SMS or something like this, you're probably doing it wrong. And uh, then this VPN access was used uh, to wipe the modem's uh, configuration or firmware. That's not really all that clear what exactly was wiped, but it rendered about 30,000 modems inoperable. This happened about a month ago. Since then, Viacom was able to ship out 30,000 new modems in order to get these customers back online. Also, apparently in the beginning of the incident, there was also a denial of service attack happening, which uh, may not necessarily have contributed to the actual attack, but uh, made investigation and responding to the attack certainly more difficult. That's not an uncommon technique uh, where an attacker does essentially distract a security team using a denial of service attack because that's usually the more obvious threat and the one that then takes up a lot of resources and takes attention away from looking for something less uh, obvious when you look at the network traffic like a wiper deleting configurations. Little tip here, I find it's handy to have a spare modem on hand on premise I've seen it uh, not with attacks, but you know, with things like lightning strikes or just failure of the modems. It's really handy to have a modem uh, ready to go and ready to test out. Now, not all ISPs necessarily allow you to sort of just swap out modems or even use your own modems, which then of course leads to longer service restoration times. And a smaller Apple story, but I think uh, still somewhat important now. Uh, this was fixed uh, mid-March and also published mid-March, but I didn't notice the blog until now. And that's a fairly uh, simple way to fish Apple credentials. Turns out in Apple, whenever you see uh, the pop-up box, uh, verify your Apple ID or uh, finish setting up your device. This comes from a component called core follow-up. And well, apparently 
any software was able uh, to pop up that exact dialog and then send you to any uh, URL of uh, the attacker's choosing. Now, initially in 11.3, so Mac OS 11.3, uh, the list of URLs was somewhat limited, but uh, this was still bypassable. So in the update released in mid-March 12.3, Mac OS restricts which binaries are able, are able actually to pop up that dialog box. You now need a specific entitlement in order uh, to open that dialog. So uh, that should limit uh, the exploitability of uh, this issue. And for everybody using PHP, be aware that the pair project fixed a vulnerability that would allow others uh, to essentially replace packages distributed via pair, which of course then could be used to send malicious content. SonarCloud wrote up the vulnerability that has been fixed yet and apparently wasn't exploited before it was fixed. Nothing really you need to do about this. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.